Hi guys, it is Dr. Pam. Hello, hello, hello. I'm trying to finish up this human development section and cover all the big theories when it comes to human development. Um, and I really try to emphasize this part because there are a lot of questions on there, no matter what class, no matter what tests my clients are taking, they really struggle with understanding those. And to be honest, most of you probably learn these things in psychology, maybe in high school. If you did well in high school psychology, and most of my clients are really smart, um, you may not have even taken college psychology. Or even then, that was one of the, um, the electives that everybody took, and you might not have paid a lot of attention to it. So one of the things about these theorists, the human development that I've been covering the last couple of uh, shorts, you'll find is that um, they are, there are building blocks. That's kind of where we are now. Um, and no matter what you've heard, you have to know them. You have to know them. You have to know them. So we're going to talk about Piaget today. So Piaget is my cognitive development guy. So when I think of Piaget, the word schema always comes to mind. And I'll talk about that just a little bit in a minute, but your schema. So Piaget said that he, again, he is our, our look at cognitive development in children. So SPCF, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete, and formal. I'm not really good at kind of giving those acronyms, but I do like this one. It kind of helps you remember what it looks like in those stages. So we're going to use a couple of sources today. So let's kind of go back and look at just some excuse me, of those ages of what it looks like. Okay. So. Sensory motor is birth to two. The senses, your five senses, that is how children are learning their cognitions are developing. Um, they are putting things in their mouth and they're touching things and pulling things and all those things. My, my husband used to say to my kids, does that say touch me? Because this is how kids learn. So senses, all five of your senses, and as you motor, as you learn to walk, crawl, move, that's how you learn. Every, uh, these stages do have then a goal. So this is the stage and the task that belongs with that goal. In sensory motor, the task is going to be object permanence, which is different than object constancy that belongs to Margaret Mailer. Object permanence, according to Piaget, means about the age of six months, babies are going to actually start to look for the ball. You'll always see that question about peekaboo. Oh my gosh, where are you? Where'd you go? There you are. So really, before that stage, children really believe you were just gone. Just gone, had no idea. And then about six months, they did realize that, wait a minute, mom, dad, the ball, whatever, it's still there, even when I can't see it. Um, one of the things that we know about the sensory motor and the pre-operational stage, both of those stages, our language is beginning to develop, right? So funny, uh, a question you may or may not see, but children learn, the, the, the words children learn first are moving objects. So whether it's the ball or the cat or dad, dad or mama, there's something about that, that effect on their schema really um, helps those words come first. So I've seen that in some study information. You may or may not see it on any of the clinical tests you're taking, but anyway, it's just a kind of cool thing to know. So then birth to two is my sensory motor. The goal of that, of course, is object permanence to know that the ball is still there and I'm going to look for it. Okay, if you've had two-year-olds, it's really fun to kind of throw the things off the high chair and you keep picking it up and they're laughing and they're laughing because at that point they know there still exists. Younger than that, they're like, it's gone, no big deal. So my pre-operational stage then, that is my kids from two to seven. Two to seven, uh, those are kids that are very much thinking of doing that magical thinking. Different slide there, guys. Okay, so magical thinking. It is really okay at that age to believe that the there's a, a man and the moon and that the tooth fairy and the Easter bunny and all of those things are going to exist. Um, they believe in like 
animism, anim, animism, that <laughs> their animals can come to life. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day and those braces aren't working right now. Okay. But in that stage, they really believed that their babies, their animals, or things could come to life. So, as I mentioned before, birth to two, sensory motor, what we're looking for, the infant knows the world through the movements and sensations, right? Five senses, movements, walking, crawling. Children learn about the world through basic actions such as sucking, grasping, listening. Again, those five basic senses. And like I said, the goal of that stage is object permanence. They're able to, uh, they're able to separate beings from people and objects. And then they realize their actions can cause, um, their, they have some power that their action can cause things. So little kids that are laying, and I think we don't do them anymore because of, of uh, health reasons, but my kids had mobiles, right? You know, and at some point they could look up at them and they just kind of moved. But as they got older, you got toys that they actually had to push or pull or do things so they could move. Because up until the age of two, that is how babies are learning to see the world. So again, that is object permanence. So now I have my lovely uh, twos. And I always say that you can definitely use this one in real life. I think that's the best way ever to, to use these things. So if you're in the grocery store and you've got some kid and you're watching him and he's just being very egocentric, it's all about me, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, you can just look over at the mom or dad and say, hey, it's okay that your kid's terrible. It's normal according to Piaget. So <laughs> that might not work very well with the mom, but just so you have an idea that Piaget said, this is how cognitions grow. Um, and, and I remind you that it, it doesn't really matter your opinion. So this is a reading test based on knowledge. So if Piaget says it, then the question will say according to Piaget. So at this stage, children will learn to learn symbolically and learn to use words and pictures to represent objects. Now, I am sure none of you guys, because you were always great parents and you probably, you know, made dinner every night. But my kids, ah, uh, you know what? When they were little, they learned that big old M in the sky, those golden arches, uh, right? So they couldn't read, but we loved to travel and we'd be driving, you know, anywhere. And one of my kids would go, McDonald's, McDonald's, right? They, they didn't know what that mean, but they knew what that big, those golden arches meant. So that was something that they really at that age knew that it meant something that's symbolic. That's what that means. So most often what we're looking for is egocentrism and struggle to see things from other persons, uh, from the perspective of other people. In a test question, what that might look like is um, Johnny and his, Johnny is three and his brother is 10 and the mother tells Johnny to please be quiet so your brother can study. Johnny has no idea there's anybody else in the world but him. He really doesn't. So we know that centrism means that I'm the center so ego, Freudian term, who I am, is it's all about me. It's all about me, which is normal between two and seven. That's where those terms, the terrible twos and the terrible threes come from, because children really think it's all about them. And they haven't grown enough to accept that there are other things in life. It's all about me. And according to Piaget, that is a normal developmental stage. I always joke that if you are 27 and you're egocentric, then that's probably something like a narcissist. But that's definitely a different video. Um, so at this point, kids do learn um, language and thinking. They're still getting better at things in very concrete terms. And I say concrete is, is literal, very literal. So especially as we look at our next stage, right, SPCF, I'm going to my concrete stage. The concrete stage, and this is the way that I always remember it. There we go. That concrete stage is when kids know that those two things have the same amount, even when they look 
different. And I think of conservation, I'm old enough to remember when we were conserving water. So in my head, that helps me remember. So conservation is the fact that these two things hold the same amount, but they look differently. And kids don't understand that until they're in this stage. Um, so I will see, um, I will um, tell my clients or, you know, um, I will tell you and tell my clients about my kids. Um, I've got three kids and most of my stories revolve around my kids. Um, however, so when they were little and we had birthday parties, you know, that pizza is usually cut into eight slices. And if you call them up, you know, they can make it like 16 slices, cut them small. We would call and have them made into 24 slices, especially when the kids were little, you know, because they wanted to pile plate. Um, pieces on their plate and not eat them. So the truth is that, you know, the slice they got was like a tiny, tiny part, but they were thrilled that they got two pieces of the tiny, tiny part, which really didn't even equal the same as a half, one of the, you know, the eight slices. But it worked out well because prior to that, they didn't get it. All they know is that the, the numbers matter as we get that concrete stage and i'm like wait a minute here you know this is not the same so also in that concrete stage and let's go by the ages so two to seven pre-operational terrible twos that's all about me seven to eleven concrete very very literal i would say literal um literally um so uh what it may look like in a question is the the mother tells the child, um, uh, it gives a child a metaphor. So she talks, to, she says to him, you know, um, if, you, if, you, if you sleep with your dogs, if you lay down with dogs, you're going to get fleas. At 11, I'm thinking, okay, let me go ahead and put little Scruffy in this cage because I don't want to get fleas. In the formal stage, I've got abstract thinking. I know what that means. Like, be careful who you lay with, right? So in my concrete stage, whatever you tell me, I'm very literally, I believe. I'm very literal and I'll believe it. So let's kind of go back and look at some of those things. I want to give you another example at the pre-operational stage before I pull away. Um, so the question again may look like you've got a kid who is five. Mom and dad are going through a divorce and they bring the kid in because he's very upset. So, you know, he's getting a divorce. What's going on? According to Piaget and my cognitive development theorist, the kid thinks it's their fault. Since the world is all about me, yes, the good is about me, but so is the bad. It's all about me. Um, Dr. Phil used to say little kids fill in the blanks to their detriment. So if they don't know what's going on, and they're again very self-centered, which is a normal stage. They really believe that it's about them. So that's great for your your theoretical practice. Of course, is always as always and always is passing the test. Okay, let me go back and just kind of pull up. Okay. So let's see here. I did talk about my 7 to 11, and those are my concrete stages. So to understand the concept of conservation, that the amount in the liquid is the same, right? They also become more logical, but still very concrete. So those are the terms you're looking for in the test. They're logical. However, that abstract thinking, um, you know, trying to get out of, uh, they're very concrete. A plus B equals C, right? And then B plus C equals A. But if you take away the A and you put in the Y, like, whoa. So just so you know that the social sciences that struggle with um, algebra, I guess we're still stuck in the concrete stage. That was just a joke. Okay, so anyway, now we get to our formal stage. My formal stage is 12 and up. So then at that age, he said that's where most of us stop. 
or able to uh, adolescents or young adults begin to think abstractly and they can reason. Um, abstract thought emerges. So abstract thought are things that I can't see, right? Let, let's process this. I, well, I, I can't see that. Then you're going to use deductive reasoning or reasoning from a general principle to a specific principle. Okay, so kind of to deduce, to take it from the big picture and take it down. Those are things that happen, and according to Piaget, that was the last stage. So adults should be in that stage. The final stage of Piaget's theory involves an increase in logic, the ability to use deductive reasoning, and understand an abstract idea. Okay, so to kind of know, again, a little more information on what we're looking for the test, let's back up. So Piaget was my cognitive therapist. Cognitive is how my thought processes, how I learn my cognitions. Um, his word for that was my schema. Find my notes. The, the term schema is there we go schema the schema de describes both the mental physical and both the mental and physical actions involved in understanding and knowing if you've ever seen me teach i'll say my schema right that's that's my process that's how i'm learning the world in piaget's view a schema included both a null a, a both a category of knowledge and the process of obtaining the knowledge. So schema is the word that belongs to Piaget. Cognitive development, those are the terms. Yes, you have to understand the theory, but when you're looking at the test questions, you're looking for keywords that'll give you like, oh, that's it. Now don't be fooled by the test because many times they'll give you keywords but if you didn't read the question, you still might miss it. So we've got to understand what the question is asking us on top of understanding what the theory says. Okay? So those terms, assimilation and accommodation, like what? The, 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 the assimilation belongs to like diversity? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But it does belong to both of them, both uh, Piaget as well as our social diversity um, cognitions. One second. Okay, so assimilation. Uh, let's go back here. So assimilation is, I like this one. Assimilation is when new information is coming back into my um, trying to find a mouse there. So what's happening with the um, there we go. Okay. So then the 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 assimilation is what is first in my schema. I see these four-legged creatures that are furry, and my schema says they're all animals. They look very similar to me when I'm two, three, four, right? All furry things are dogs. All furry things are cats. That is assimilation. I am putting that information in my schema. Now then, I have to make room for new. So look, I think this is a doggy. I've learned this. And then I see a cat and I'm saying, well, dad, that's a doggy, right? Assimilation. Dad says, no, that really is not. So there's a difference between dog and cats or cats and dogs. And then she graduates and then she learns accommodation or she has to accommodate the new information to her current schematic view or her schema. Okay. So again, assimilation versus accommodation. 
Those are the two basic rules you're going to see. In the question, it'll be really clear if it's assimilation from a cultural viewpoint. From a cultural viewpoint, assimilation means I've given up my own culture and I've assimilated and I look like everybody else in the culture, right? So acculturation in culture means I've added the new culture to my current culture. However, what we're looking for here is, again, knowing that assimilation, I look, it looks very similar on my, on my schema, and accommodation is making room in my schema for the new information. Okay, again, terminology that belongs to Piaget. Okay, according to Piaget, this is what it looked like. So first, we assimilated, um, and what you might see on the test is that question that the, the little boy says to the dad, oh my goodness, that fat woman over there, she must be a well. Because in his little mind, she looks similar, right, as, as sorry, as she looks as similar as, wow, guys, sorry. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. I wonder what movie stars do when they get the hiccups in the middle of something. I don't know. Okay, so assimilation. Again, so what I'm talking about is the um, the little kid, right, who, who talks about the woman. He, she's a well. So then in assimilation process, in my mind at two, I've assimilated that these, that Let's go back to the one with four animals. I've assimilated, they look similar in my schema. Everything with four with four legs and fuzzy is going to be a dog. And then equal liberation happens, right? I know that. I'm good. That's a dog. Then, right, this cat comes along and I say dog. And dad says, no, that is not a dog. So then now my schema is not equal, like what? And then that's where accommodation comes in. So knowing the terminations, assimilation, equal liberation, equal liberation, and then disequal, it disequal liberation. What disequal means is I'm not comfortable with that. So now that I get the new information that I've made room in my schema, right? to accommodate the new information. If this were a uh, Fessinger, he would talk about cognitive dissonance, but cognitive dissonance is an adult. Cognitive dissonance is that I have two very, uh, I have a, a thought and a new thought comes in or a feeling and a belief and they don't match up. So that's what that would mean. However, when it comes to this theory, um, that is not the terminology. So assimilation, equal, equal, equal abrasion, and then disc equal embrasion is how we get to accommodation. Okay. Again, the scores we're going to use are schema. So uh, schema, my assimilation, and my accommodation. So let me go back. So my sensory motor stage, right? That is between birth to two. You're learning that, you know, the object uh, permanency, like, oh my gosh, I've closed my eyes and the ball's still there. Pre-operational, the goal of that one, the task of that stage is egocentrism. Children are supposed to learn that it's about them. Okay, so we can do lots of work on Piaget, but for the test, that is the right answer. The concrete stage is 7 to 11. That is when I am very concrete. So a, a, a um, grandmother says to her kids, you guys get away with murder at your house. The kids come home and say, Mom, we didn't kill anybody. And Mom's like, what? Grandma said we'd get away with murder. So they're very, very concrete. 
as we get older, we can understand that's not what grandma meant, and that's in our formal stage. So a couple of things. When you see a test question, and you've got a, one, a man who is in her, his 80s, he's had some sort of TBI or a neurocognitive um, issue, he may go down to the concrete stage. Eric, I'm sorry, Piaget also suggested that many people stay in that concrete stage. They never get to the formal stage. But definitely a man who has had some sort of um, neurodevelopmental, neuro, um, some issue going on, we really might be back at the concrete stage. So the abstract thinking stage, I can I can kind of look at the future and I can plan and you know and I'm watching like what's happening in in um, uh, Russia right now, right? So in my formal stage, I can take that in and I can make information in it. In my concrete stage, I hear there's a war in in Afghanistan and I begin to freak, right? So that is what that looks like, S-P-C-F. What I did want to do is kind of give you a little history um, of Piaget. And not that this would be on the test, but in general, what I find things that, are, that help me remember and things that help me teach is kind of giving a little history. So then, let's see here. So Piaget was a cognitive therapist, and what that meant is that he really was a follower of people who thought cognitions. So he attended the Binet So we know that the first IQ test was was developed by Stan, well, developed in France. It was developed by Monet. And what the, the rationale was from that is that we had lots of children that were living in institutions um, and not being educated, and the French government um, said to them, so hey, let's go back and look with this. Let's figure out can we maybe educate more of those people? So the Binet, the Binet School or the Binet Center of Intelligence is where our first intelligence test came from. So, um, and you'll see this other ways. So part of what Alfred Binet did was he used his children in the, 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 as part of the research. Unethical now, but you know, back in 1909, it was okay. Um, and so, to, using his Stanford Binet, the test that he used, it allowed him to really determine which of the students, which of the adolescents, really had some IQ and could function in a school setting. Okay, so Stafford Binet is the first person that really looked at IQ. Um, he was commissioned by the French government to make sure that, um, again, kind of, kind of getting the people out of the institutes that didn't need to be there. I say that to say um, because what we know is that Piaget was part of the Alfred Institute, right? So we think back in all this kind of Renaissance period where all of our theories were coming from. So Binet um, came up with, the, he used the theory, he tested it with his children, and it really, the research turned out well. So then Americans, because we're so good at what we do, uh, please don't call me, please don't leave a awful text. I do love America. I'm glad to be in America. And please don't go. I teach to the test. My personal values and beliefs have nothing to do with my client, nor as I teach the test. I'm teaching you to pass a test. So 
again. So let's go back to that. Then um, the Stanford Binet was the first one. Um, Turnman came from Stanford University. He brought it back to America, and that's what's called the Stanford Binet. Okay. But it was the first IQ was Biden Binet. It was the average was a hundred points. Okay, so again we've looked at other testing and we'll talk about that um, under assessment pieces. But just know that he did, and he also really did use a lot of that work with his children, and we've heard that with other theorists, right? That you use your children as the guinea pigs. If you're not sure, go back and check that out, okay? Um, so again, so just a little history. and These are not on the test. I'm just really trying to help you um, bring some thought patterns and where we got here, okay? Okay. We've talked about assimilation versus accommodation. We've, talk about, we've talked about your schemas. We've talked about the importance of uh, that this is developed in childhood, okay? He talks about assimilation and all those good things. I like this one, so again, the assimilation. The dog! Well, she gets older and she still thinks it's a dog, and Dad says it's a cat. So this is from assimilation, right? Because I think they look the same. Dad says, no, that's not true. This is a cat. Cats are animals and we are people. So that's what it looks like in the process. I was going to give you just a little history of Piaget and not that you care. Um, but he did go to school um, in, with a Freudian Institute. So a lot of his beliefs originally were based in Freud. Um, however, the Stanford Binet is not. It was originally written um, that didn't include kids, but now it does. So if the question talks about which is the oldest test we use, that's the Stanford Binet. If it talks about what is the um, uh, so for the Stanford Binet, as well as the um, Wexler, right? The WAIS, W-A-I-S is for adults. W-I-S-C is for children. Um, so what he would say is that if you're, the Stanford Binet is equivalent, it's correlated to the Stanford test. Okay. So, but Binet did have that a piece, that assessment piece first. And I always bring that back just to understand um, where Piaget came from. So this time frame, what's going on in the world in this whole revolution of looking at physical and emotional illness and perhaps the relationship and why things happen, right? So Alfred Binet was above his time. This theory didn't come back. This theory didn't come back until later. Um, which again, that was based on Turnman, who was uh, an, an American psychologist. So to kind of wrap this up, so SPCF, I have to know what happens in each of those states, what it would look like on a question, right? And then decide what that looks like. So SPCF, sensory motor, preoperational, concrete, and formal. He is my cognition guy. He's my cognition guy in human development. Don't get confused because changing my cognitions in a helping relationship is going to be back. Okay. So I always hear we don't have any questions on those. A couple of things that I've seen. So I've had the question said an 83 year old man had some sort of TBI or dementia or something that was going on. Okay. And they ask him the metaphor is, you know, should people who live in glass houses throw stones? Um, and he repeats verbatimly what I said. 
So that means that man that was in his formal stage due to TBI, traumatic brain injury, something, he's gone down because he's very literal. So that's what it'll look like in the question. Um, let me see if I have one here. Oh, I have another view of Colbert here. Most, I'm sorry, of Piaget. Um, and this one, it's very clear about where they are. So birth to two, sensory motor, and they're supposed to learn object permanence. Two to six, pre-operational, pre right? So at this point, symbolic thinking, they know the M in the sky is McDonald's, right? So language use, egocentric thinking, it's all about me. I don't care that anybody else in the car or my family members doesn't want McDonald's. It's what I want, and that's all that matters. So imagination, experience, grow as the child develops. 7 to 11. That's when kids are very concrete, right? So they need to know 2 plus 2 equals 4, and 4 plus 4 equals 8. It always needs to make sense and line up. In our formal stage, um, those are many of us, including me, um, who don't always agree with the law. So some historical cases look at like Rosa Parks, of course, and she knew that she might go to jail if she continued that boycott. Um, let's see, I lost my thought. Any part of that civil rights uh, movement was really part of this. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So, that is what it looks like for Piaget's stages. Schema is the word that you need to know. And again, whether it's sensi, um, assimilation or accommodation, those are all terms that belong with that. Okay. Uh, it's covered his history. Okay, remember all these except for the formal stage, you do have a task that you should develop. And of 12 and older, and that's you and I. He said we stop at 12 and older, we're grown ups, and that's it. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. Um, this was a brief overview of Piaget. Um, I hope you found it, found it helpful. And um, what we're looking for is remembering he is a cognitive guy. Now, Piaget actually also had a, um, a morality test, right? He really did. And remember, Piaget was friends um, with Kohlberg. That's why I line up. So you might see a question that says, according to Piaget's stage of development, I'm usually kind of guessing, rolling out, finding the best answer, because we don't teach a lot in general about Piaget's um, um, morality development. That's where Kohlberg came on. And I think I've mentioned in my other videos that Kohlberg um, decided to, uh, he decided um, that women were immoral based on his clan. Carol Gilligan came along and said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, that is not true. Um, and she suggested that women could do all of those things that men could do. So that is circumscription versus compromise. Trying to close out my windows here. Do you have questions, guys? Something that you want to know about human, about specifically um, about these theories that I didn't cover? Okay, bore you all to tears. Well, yes, Doctor Pam, you did. But I'll go back and listen to this later, right? Okay, guys, enjoy it. And I um, hope you can, um, I hope you benefit from it. Thanks.